It's Dr. Richard McLean, and I'm opposing my treatment by the Australian government. Um, I'll just introduce this um, video. Um, so I'm publishing this encounter in which I met Tony Riddle because he explains how I've been scapegoated, how they've got away with it, and how we'll, I will be literally sacrificed and oppressed to death. It's not a far-fetched story because I've actually already been forced to suicide by this very elongated systemic government oppression and it's underpinned by key powerful political stakeholders. Tony Riddle is a returned serviceman in the SAS and he has over 337,000 LinkedIn followers and millions of pings online a year. And he's a person of interest and now my injustice issues after I've framed my issues with his knowledge and now a topic of discussion. I believe Tony needs whistleblower protection and he served in this country as in the SAS and he needs his pension um, paid by the Australian government. He's been scapegoated as well um, and I apologise to him for publishing this but without it I may be killed. I'm alone, isolated, and absolutely scapegoated and identified, vilified, and victimized. It's my best wishes to him and his family and his wife who knew about this aspect of his life. But I wish to draw attention to my work case that is before the AAT on the 6th of April, 2023. I present this video as evidence for that case because the government's lawyer, Kate Watson, is actively oppressing me financially and in opposition to the Charter of Human Rights of a person with a disability. And that states that a person with a disability must have equality before the law and access before the law. And I have none. It also says we must not be taken advantage of. We must, must not be vilified. We must not have the sanctity of life removed. And we not have, not have our property withheld from us. And I'm guessing that means money too. It also says we must not be experimented on or be tortured. I oppose my hearing going forward when I have no representation because my case, my work cover case, is doomed to fail. I'm presenting this document as a video um, and evidence um, in as far as I'm concerned. I'm an identified scapegoat of the Australian government. Tony Riddle speaks about his role of being a soldier and I can't explain why this unbelievable meeting happened but the, the universe has a rhyme and reason to it. And I don't wish Tony any harm. Listen to this conversation and it will blow your mind. It will explicate the conspiracy around me and my vile victimization, which has led me, sadly, to my suicide attempt and then further my cognitive brain dis disablement of which uh, there is no justice. And it really is a meeting of the minds and two people who have suffered on the short stick end of the federal government agenda. The government says I'm not an employee for the purposes of the SRC Act, whatever that means. Obviously, I need a lawyer to look into legislation with the SRC Act. All I know is that on the NDIS Commission's website, it says a worker can be anyone who is employed or otherwise engaged to provide NDIS supports and services to people with a disability. Workers can be paid or unpaid and can be people who are self-employed, employees, contractors, consultants, and volunteers. This includes me. They're rejecting me and my work cover case because they're saying I'm not an employee for the purposes of the SRC Act. It clearly says in that statement under the NDIS Commission that I am a worker and I am an employee. Kate Watson is a government lawyer who's defending the already unbeatable government's decision to reject my workers' co compensation case. They are forcing the hearing, which is geared for me to lose, on the 6th of April, 2023. And that is wrong to go ahead. That is inequitable to go ahead. That is unfair to go ahead. And further, it acts in, in, in resonance with the uh, oppression that I've been undergoing for many years. As a lawyer, she's aware of the Charter of Human Rights and also disability law. She also knows that I'm doomed to fail and they're trying to rush it through because I can't get a lawyer. I'm a scapegoat 
and every time I call legal aid, as soon as they know it's me, they suddenly can't help. She acts outside the remit of the Charter of Human Rights of a Person with a Disability, which states I must have equality before the law and access to it, like I said, and she knows with a conscious malice that I have no chance at defending my case against her. And she's an S uh, SRC Act expert who has represented the government at Comcare for years. It also says I must not be taken advantage of, discriminated against, have the sanctity of life removed, have property withheld, including money, nor be tortured. And all of these things are happening to me and all of these things continue to oppress and victimise me. I deserve a lawyer to represent me in the AAT case. But of course, the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, will not acknowledge me. He won't answer my calls and he oversees the Commonwealth Ombudsman where I was invited to make a public interest disclosure and it's still sitting there absolutely being ignored. And that silence is elongating my suffering in poverty because I don't have enough food, medicine or clothing. Mark Dreyfus refused to act recently in my AAT case and so he sides with my oppressors, including Steve Isonides, my former partner of five years and an ASIO employee who, who's, who Mark Dreyfus absolutely knows that he worked for ASIO and was my partner for five years and that he exploited me. My public interest disclosure exposes government corruption to the highest levels and I've published it and I invite you to have a look. The Attorney General's office is rejecting my calls and I've published that. I was opposing my victimisation and my catastrophic character assassination. This video in which um, um, we have a bit of fun time with um with um who was I saying with with um with who I said before uh, he's a government prominent government employee and a returned SAS soldier Tony Riddle that's right I gain insights into Australian politics and how lawyers members of the AAT and staff are on a first name basis at Comcare the AAT and the government. He's one of only three people with a counter-terrorism security clearance of his level in this country. And he probably should have seen me coming. I recorded it because I thought I was in at risk because of what we were doing and because I didn't know him. Um, and the recording kept going. So he's a person of interest. And now that his story's on the public domain, it draws into sharp focus my own story of oppression and victimization a victimisation which actually killed me. I was revived from what was deemed a fatal incident inside Werribee Mercy Hospital and there's no recourse. He validates how the federal government identifies individuals and scapegoats them and literally sacrifices them. That's right, to death. You see, if I killed myself right now or today, we could blame mental illness and drugs. It's the perfect crime and they know it. They won't kill you, but they'll do everything to make sure that happens. And they do it by redacting you in the prosperity, and they do it by allowing you to trip up and make an ass of yourself in other ways. I'm a vulnerable person, and I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia when I was 20, and now also with a cognitive brain impairment from the suicide attempt that was the result of the exact systemic oppression and elongated financial abuse that comes from Steve Isonides, and a Geelong magistrate, and APRA, and APRA, and um, the Australian Human Rights Commission, and a whole lot of other agencies, up to and including my PLR and ELR royalties that I got for, for writing my book, which have now dropped off the line. I also advocated for people on a local, state, national, and international level for the best part of 30 years. The suicide attempt that happened in Werribee Mercy Hospital in in February 2021, was an exact result of the prolonged financial economic abuse and family violence that happened to me. And the tragedy happened inside a hospital. It happened inside a hospital and there's no recourse. And there is a cover up about that as well. I invite you to email the, ser the clinical services director, Michael Lagrasso, and explain why you think that this abandonment of duty of care and my current cognitive brain impairment and the zero compensation nor recourse is unjust. You can also email Steve Isonides. He was my former partner of five years and worked for ASIO. He exploited me for a disability nest egg I had from 2008 
and when that money was used up, he dumped me and left me homeless. He, on the other hand, uh, I was on a pension, but he, on the other hand, earned $30,000 and $40,000 a month, and I was on a pension, and he owes me a fair, equal, legal settlement, and you can email him if you want. And with all that, um, I would just like to say that this conversation with Tony Riddle, in which, yeah, we're doing naughty things, but it really does expose the government for the, the, the way that it, it, it captivates an Australian audience and vilifies, victimises and identifies someone for the purposes of extinguishing them and catastrophically character assassinating them and further putting them at great risk of death and, um, and damage. And I oppose it. And this video is absolutely for the purposes of the SRC Act and the fact that I can't get a lawyer, I can't be a whistleblower and I can't go to the police. This is an abhorrent way to treat an Australian citizen and I am a free Australian citizen and I deserve better. And you know what? Other people who have rejected me over the years haven't deserved me because I'm a good person and I know I'm a good person and I've been pushed to the edge and I'm being pushed to the edge. This is why I've made the decision to publish this document and with it, um, I'm opposing my treatment at the AAT and I'm opposing my treatment at the Australian Human Rights Commission and I'm opposing my treatment treatment and being banned at AFCA. I'm opposing being banned at WorkSafe. I'm opposing the Attorney General not responding to me. I'm opposing Michaela Cash sending me to the same helpline when I pointed out systemic corruption. I'm opposing Finance Minister Birmingham, how he rejected my CDDC scheme payment. I'm rejecting all the malpractice and mistreatment that's happened to me over the years. And I say to you this, that I have been a campaigner for human rights for 30 years, and I will still look out for marginalised people and anything beyond a simple life for me. That's a home, a car, a computer, a coffee, somewhere to go, something to do. And giving back to the community again, we'll be going into a trust fund. And that trust fund will help the trans, the black, the very young, the very old, the survivors of child sexual abuse and the survivors of sexual violence. And yes, I've been pinned as that as well. And it'll even go to the people who are remorseful of their actions and want a second chance at life. Those people are my people. And those people affected by mental illness and physical disabilities or different abilities have always been my people. And I will still stick up for them. And I love people. I really do. I love people. And it's just a shame that the world's forsaken me in the way that they have. But I, I tell you, I'm, I'm not dead yet. And, and this chance meeting is a real eye-opener on Australian politics and how scapegoating works and how I was basically oppressed to death and how they got away with it. And I won't let them get away with moving my AAT work cover hearing forward when the AAT and Comcare and members are all on first name basis with one another and they're all pissing in each other's pockets with cushy government jobs being paid shitloads of money. And we don't hear about their stories. They're protected. Their identities are protected. These are people who sit in cushy jobs of $500,000 a year and they are paid to toe the party line and it's about money. I've never wanted money and I've never survived on much, but when it's absolutely and catastrophically denied to you like it has to me, I need to make a stand. Otherwise, I would say I'm going to be homeless, but they've already made me homeless. I was recently incarcerated and for two months and the police kicked in the door. They took me to a hospital. They locked me away. And while I was in there, the hospital and the police oversaw the destruction of every single thing that I own and it was taken to the tip and then the hospital rejected me to a homeless shelter. I don't think you can really understand the world of a scapegoat until you realise that the enemy are the people who are supposed to be looking after you. And this video's, video goes some way to describe in explicit detail why you shouldn't trust the government and why um, conceited, politically powerful people in positions of privilege are the real cowards. And you know who's the champion? You know who's the real brave one? It's fucking me. And I'm going to stick up for you and I'm going to stick up for all you people because I'm not dead yet and I'm still um, advocating for my rights. Cheers.
Is that the... Oh, certainly it's a graphic. Could be pretty electric sex. <laughs> He's open. <coughs> Particularly when you look at the existential nature of some of those elements. Well, they're all um, by... Um, Existential risk is totally understood. Yeah, well, usually... Um, and people routinely fabricated under that bottle. Pardon? And routinely fabricated. I'm doing existential risk. And you go, just because you wrote it in the paper doesn't mean you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just me. You know? Most, 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 most. Can you tell me more about the sheeps and wolves again? Because every single person in the world has forsaken me. Yeah, so... And, I'm and, and how, I'm, how did they do that? I'm a sheep dog as well. How, how did they get my own parents to get an intervention dog on me? Like, they made it so that I would attack my friends by not supporting me. And now, I don't know how much they know, how much they're informed, but it's very... It's how, almost... How, like, how did you come across that? I stumbled across it on LinkedIn. Did you find Carver with it? No, I didn't. So Carver's could have criticality, accessibility, recuperability, vulnerability, emergency response oh, right. and something else. And yeah. the CIA. So what you've described there is the professional and academia approach of decrediting bad apples instead of bad barrel makers and bad um, barrels. Why did they do it? Ad hominem. They're targeting the individual because they can't disgrace. They don't want to disgrace the entity. They target you. You're a sacrificial doctor. I am fucking sacrificial. You have no idea how much. That's how it works. I was a soldier. You don't, you don't pick the wars you go to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking um, send you. That's fucked. I mean, I've always said from a very young age. Well, well why would you go? Why would you kill someone? Like, I, I just couldn't get my head around it that someone would take an order from someone else to kill them. And well, I'm not having a go. I'm just like, for me, no, no, that, that, was, that was a thing that I couldn't get my head around. So I'm like, I would never go to war. And they'd replicate that in the Milgram experiments to demonstrate why people would behave like the Nazis. Have you read the full Milgram? No. It's made up. It's another one of these weird experiments, Western educated, industrialized, <coughs> um, religious dem democracy. Yeah. And so they got a bunch of Harvard Uni students to bully each other. That's not a fucking, that's not a representation of, that's naive empiricism and naive scale. You're so clever, aren't you? What, what, what's your, what's your, um, what's your IQ? Oh, I don't know. You don't know. And, and how do you, how do you see the negative side to intelligence? Uh, you just said you're a black sheep or whatever, you're a victim of fraud, like me. How, how, how do you, how do you reverse that? You know how do you get out of it? You know who Pol Pot was? Yeah. He was the one who killed like so many people in the in the Uh I don't I don't know the history of some people in class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, fucking hell. It's the war, isn't it? It's coming to me again. It's an allegory of already massacres that are and you know what they say? The the the, the famine's always happening. Do you know how Indonesia got independent? Yeah. The Dutch educated them, gave them Dutch education, same as Gandhi, as soon as they got it. They overturned the colonial power. Knowledge disrupts them. Oh. I I have so much knowledge. The Catholic Church uh, suppressed science for four hundred years. Yeah. Because they didn't want them talking about other stuff. Oh my God! This is the most interesting conversation I think I've ever had. And then someone who understands exactly where I'm coming from. I meet people and I go, you know, usually the narrative will be around begging them for money or can they lend me five fifty bucks but the whole other spectre of things is i've never had the opportunity to ex explain to another person who would have a ear that would suit the words coming out of my mouth that um so you've heard of risk cognition before no risk cognition is your ability to foresee and perceive risk you know how many eskimos had 15 or 100 words for ice because that's their environment. Russians see the colour red differently. So you and I don't see things the same way because our visual acuity <coughs> is different, our hearing is different, we've got cultural and social divides. Risk perception is not a universal title, it's not universally applied. You know how many risk perception articles and bullshit quasi science research papers there are? Fucking uh, mine's quasi science. Mine's quasi science. 
But it actually, it's, technically, none of us can write pure science because yeah. the English language is still made up. Yeah. So I wonder if you were, can I just check in my grinder if you my grinder or scrap if you were sent to me because um, I'm very suspicious. No one's ever had the um, ability to acknowledge That's why I try not to use grinder because the Chinese can do it like that. Uh, right. Well, you know what? Every time I get on grinder, I'll talk to someone. Next thing you know, I'll go, this is awesome. I love this present. Blip, blip, goes. Yeah. Someone's watching us. Where someone's fucking watching me? Yeah, they, I've been targeted by the intelligence services before as well. Particularly oh. overseas. When you're trying to get your dicks up overseas, they manipulate all the time. Are you fucking joking me? I have to warn you, you might be under investigation in this room. Um, I have to warn you, I brought the investigation here because oh. I am a known individual. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on, you brought it here to my house. Oh, you brought it here. This is the nexus of both of us being looked at. This will... Well, 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 this, is, this, is, this, is, this is fireworks, but this is... They're doing backflips now going, these two cunts could fucking... Yeah, potentially. You know what the China Belt Road is? Why do you keep asking me questions as if to, um, to like with you ideas that I'd be interested in? <laughs> because... No, go, 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 go. Because the China Belt Road initiative is the one the Andrews government signed up for, and it's not being built here, but essentially it's the re... It's the modernisation of the silk trade routes, a trillion dollar investment by the Chinese government, so the, they can get oil across land to Pakistan and into China. I was the expert witness that testified at the International Tribunal as to the shift of shit they were doing. Really? But nobody else saw so, it. So how, how, how can you be hired now? But I, if you went to work at Telstra in communications or something like that. Well, two days after I started writing my report, two Chinese contractors for the NBN started digging outside my window in Bendigo. Are you gagging me? Uh, uh, and I went out and asked whether they had no work orders, they had no idea, and they just packed up their shit and moved. Now, I'm not paranoid. I'm, I, I, I know there's a conspiracy. It, it becomes more than just conspiracy with me. It's actually... Um, an allegorical crucifixion, and um, it's a it's a um, it's a religious religiosity thing. Like, yeah, that's, and that's how it's, it's it's straight out of the playbook. Um, because the playbook was written hundreds of years ago. But remember Galileo and. Are you are you from uh, um, the Illuminati or something? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, as as my um, very lovely wife tells me, if you're so smart, why are we so poor? That, she must be stupid. That doesn't have any thing on it for you. Um, oh, I'm not looking like stupid. I should, I'll take that back. That was a really rude thing for me to say. I'm just saying, I think uh, it's assumptive. Oh, I, know, I know, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Yeah, that's exactly. I get what you mean. Yeah, you mean. Yeah, exactly. you mean. Right. But it, doesn't, it doesn't have any correlation. Well, causation and correlation. Because yeah, exactly. I, I say, I say that some people say to me, um, why have you got, someone's gone last night goes, why have you got no money? And I'm like, I feel like saying, well, why have you got money? You know, and every single friend that I have has told me to move on and it's my fault and I'm a bad person. I lost when, when, no. when, 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 when I, if, if I made them lose their job, they'd be angry. But but they're all con in their conceited privilege with positions they've either made or they're in the company or they're in the government and they're hating on me, going, you lost your job, you should move on. When in fact... The position of um, privilege from them to me is just hugely profound. Like, I, my job was taken. My, my this was taken. I've had everything taken. And, you know, I've walked the path of a fucking saint and, um, and, um, and literally been used, abused, exploited and crucified for it. So I've run a shadow campaign against the NDIS for the last year. I wrote 164 FOIs. And I will submit it as part of the new NDIS inquiry, and I've deconstructed the FOI process in government over the last 10 years, and they are fabricating the truth. Absolutely, they are. And I can demonstrate the algorithmic flaws that they have. The flaw? What do you mean flaws? I created a... So, when you put in an FOI request, yeah. how do they extract that key phrase? Sienta metrics, which we were talking about. Mm. You've got some moron on a base grade bloody pay scale overinflated. It's right. so cold. It's like it, it takes the soul away from everything. <coughs> and so, like your experience, I wrote 
a scientific paper and developed an algorithmic process to demonstrate that the airlines manufacture their risk ratings. They're false. They're because vicarious liability abounds, mm. and that and harness all of the research papers that pandemics and uh, vector-borne pathogens spread across the east coast of Australia due to the airlines. How popular do you think that made me? Oh, of course. I lost, I lost millions. You lost what? I lost millions. Millions? Yeah. Oh, did you have millions at one point? Yeah, I heard. Company I ran. Oh, you have been destroyed, haven't you? How, how did that get you on met? I was fucking a, a hot guy that introduced me to it. He said this will be even better when you fuck me. All right. Hey, well, that fucking sounds all right, man. Yeah, and you're like, and you're like, bring it on. This is fucking. Top. Yeah, so I've only been by in the last few years. All right. I've only used meth in the last few years. And I only use it when I fuck. Yeah. And uh, so have you got kids and stuff, or you, you, you family man? Yeah, no, that's all right. And your wife's not happy about it, but yeah. Yeah. Not, not my, it's not in my zone, you know. Mm. Um, um, that's in that's in the zone that overlaps that side and the fun side puts this this side. <laughs> it's yeah. all it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so no, you and see the problem is <coughs> this narrative or story. Are you going? Are you or, or late to? Can I just interject? Are you late to get home? To be no. with her or what she's no. not expecting you and no. are you in a rush like no. put put a time signature on this for me oh you, you, you can just you can just hang out yeah, yeah. okay cool yeah. cool um yeah no, i can hang out um what was your previous question oh um, i can't remember now no okay. how, how, how know. many oh that, that's right um how did you get on to bed and you said you're fucking on the bottom yeah i had um so i was living in singapore yeah. And I met a, and he was an intelligence agent because they were targeting me. Um, he was a cross dresser, and I was trying to fuck hot Asian chicks. Couldn't find any, and so he was dressed up. Um, they know what you're into, don't they? Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, they profile you. As as much as Google. How, how, how do you, how, how do they profile you? Yeah, psychometrics. How's so, what psychometrics? Psychometrics is the persona you create through your involvement with the internet. You've got. You're a dog lover. You're um, an academic. You've got. You know, oh, I'm. I, I don't even. I don't. I have no forward thinking when it comes to um, presenting myself. You know. Well, I, I'm just absolutely a sitting duck. Yeah. Well, but unfortunately, so is everyone else. The the recent critical infrastructure bill mandates that all of the infrastructure, telcos, yeah. and everything have a certain plan and resilience process in place. It also highlights you've got to declare all fo foreign ownership. Who owns Optus? Singtel. Most of our critical infrastructure is not owned. It, oh, really? It negates all of it. <coughs> who's so who, who's at the top? For what? Well, you know, um, Albanese is at the top of the country, but who's really at the top? Like Trump was a, um, a good front for a political um, country that's saturated in media and right-wing narratives. Pharmaceutical resource, the, the robber barons that made all the money from... Are know, they the sitting there somewhere right now in a, in a huge million dollar, uh, in, 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 in um, Switzerland I, right now going, oh, look at, I, look at Albanese. I ran the crisis simulations for Pfizer and their pandemic preparedness and all their doctors and scientists were panicked and I said, don't forget you make pharmaceuticals, find something to sell, don't focus on the risk. Man, do I fucking regret that how, how, what, what did you say? You said create a vaccine and sell it, even though it doesn't work. That's what they did. So, oh, so, so you're, you are you saying you're behind? Hang on, go say again. Say the simple English. So Pfizer, during a crisis, yeah, will focus on the disasters in front of them, as opposed to identifying the opportunity. Mm. The opportunity is to make a product that saves the disaster. Oh right. So with COVID. Yeah. Oh right. So when did you say this statement? Two thousand and seven. In Hong Kong, round table with the executives of five. Really? So was that was that in your in your perspective, is that intelligently um, orchestrated and like HIV? Well they would have got to it eventually, possibly. It's hard to separate 
a factual forecast with one that got oh, it, that's like the real and the ideal and then the yeah. overlap yeah. yeah so it's yeah. Oh, sorry i was holding up this plot yeah. hypothesizing you know and mixing future and past forecasting together um but yeah i planted the seed and realigned them yeah because it was their executive board some of which were on the decision making I'm so embarrassed. Can you get a rat to run around in the kitchen? No. Sorry, you can't. <coughs> and yet, when I did SA board as pandemic planning, they said, oh, our forecast is that we'll have 10% people absent. I said, great. What's the demographics of your employment, you know, your workforce? Oh, 80% women. Great. Who is the cultural stereotype that stays at home when the kids are sick, who are typically the first line of infection? Oh, mums. Therefore, you'll have some tea rates. Are probably going to be. I'm um, yeah, no, you know, you're so clever. I'm not even um, catch, keep keeping up. You know what I mean? And I find it incredibly stimulating. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I had, a, I had a bit of a brain injury, you see. Yeah, so my, right. mem- my memory, my memory, kind of. I've had my, me- my memory. Blown up. What? Blown up. My memory, my concentration are really not what they used to be, and I find this um, is incredibly. Dis- Destruct, it's been destructive. Well, it, it literally destroyed me. Um, I was destroyed um, by, and I've only just worked this out. And I think it's um, a really important opportunity for me to not only have some fun, but to, um, to, to try and acknowledge um, this thing in, in a way which is going to lead to a response from the Australian community because all I want to do is be kind and help people. And that's about it. But, but the opposite of me not standing up for myself is death. So I will raise you one. So I served in Rwanda during the genocide. Yeah. I was a commander in the SAS. Yeah. I Hang on. Bravo to zero. Uh, uh, British. Uh, British. Uh, British. Uh, but British. yes, I do. That my unit, uh, the Australian Army. I survived the Blackhawk crash in Townsville, the largest peace time incident killed 18 of us on the day. Right. I developed post-traumatic stress. You you uh, identified it as a as no no a, I was diagnosed. Are you diagnosed? Medically. Oh right okay yeah yeah. Cool. And they kicked me out. And <coughs> so at the age of thirty odd, no superannuation. I had spent fourteen years of my life at the sharp end in a unit that, in the history of the Australian Defence Force, has only had twelve hundred members, of which I was one. As soon as I got sick, they kicked me out. Yeah, of course they did. Because they want the, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's no, there's no anti discrimination law for them. In order to get into the SAS, I spent four days as a prisoner of war being tortured and interrogated by our own government because we are in the prone to catch a club, so we better prepare you. Really? And and what was the torture like? Well, well there's a, the Senate, a Senate inquiry was released in 2017 outlining the resistance to interrogation. It's remarkably Guantanamo Bay. No sleep. They, there's a whole bunch of psychiatric games that they play with you. They torture you. I got waterboarded. I'm being tortured now. Yeah. No, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, I literally am. Yeah. You tell me why I don't, and then I'll explain why I do. Alright. So you were sent to me. Alright, let's bring it on then. The um, speakers in my room. Why are they exploiting an already expressed vulnerability that is looking to put me off my perch and why does it happen every night who does it and why is it in my car on the computer and in my phone and um what is its relationship to asio and further um the um further the um oh there's another element so i can't remember all this but just go on that but you're you part of the data harvesting, the data greed that's crept into the government system. Increasingly, government can't surveil their own people because we live in a fragmented community. They don't go to church, they don't go to town halls. They need to collect from people's homes. The other place they do it is the medical service. And the only place they've been able to harvest data from um, organisations and individuals outside of the census for the last 10 years. So, so, so you didn't answer the question. Why? How, how, how am I going to stop this torture? And how do I how do I confront 
an enemy when I can't identify a person who it is. And when I go to sleep at night, hi, they're in my room and they're... Um, Remembering that it, it has a mental effect and there is other... I know what you're saying. And there is one thing that's true. I'm crazy and I actually hear things and I have before. The other thing is, it doesn't mean that these things aren't happening. So three pilots were shot down in the Gulf War, Bravo 20, male and two females. The male had his teeth knocked out through electrocution, beaten up, tortured, mentally fine at the end of the war. Female, another first and female pilot was raped mm. non-stop the whole time she was in captivity. And the war, relatively mentally healthy. The final female pilot, and touch her. She lives in fear of rape every minute and every hour, and she still fuck her. Mm. Because they created the environment to let the mind do the rest of the work. Oh, that's what they're doing with you. They isolate you, they make create self doubt, they remove all your resources. It's the playbook. And so, tell me um, who you work for again and why you're in my room. <laughs> And w where are the speakers? Can you point them out? Can you point to them? The point what? The point, the point to the speakers, where the sound comes from. I have no idea. You don't know? Can you, what about the birds that are around the house that, um, um, you know, that have a bird sound and then they, it's an allegory that kind of morphs into something else. Like, how do you, have you heard of the theremin? You know, the machine that goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. yeah. He created a listening device that you point a laser and put it into an embassy that are undetected for 10 years. Hey, what was it called? It's a listening experiment. And so he created a list. It was behind a presidential seal in the embassy with a um, uh, crystal, radio yeah. crystal, undetectable. But when you point lasers at it, anybody who said that that would exist or was a thing before it was found, you were insane. All right. Well, but it existed. You know what? I, I absolutely understand. This is what I understand. I understand feeling. I understand um, metaphor, symbology, and um, allegory. Oh, yeah. Take it from semiotic. 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 That's why Notre Dame's got devils all the time because they couldn't educate the population through books, so they put this on. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. So nuclear facilities, when they create a safety plan for a thousand years from now, mm. they draw from the learnings from religion and Aboriginal songlines because they're the only human narratives for the last thousand of years. Yeah. Because well, someone I, needs to remember the safety procedures yes. in a thousand years' time. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I am a multi-dimensional person. I'm not I'm fairly sure you're quite rooted in this one. <laughs> rooted. <laughs> I'm what? Rooted in this one. You're in this dimension. You're, you're, um... Well, I don't understand the contrast. Oh, I mean, I mean, like, it seems to me, it could be just my vulnerability, and they're exploiting that, which is the extra evil of this. But, um, you know, for a person who hears voices, and then to put voices in their room, and um, set that up. That, so you're saying, like, autism, they understand on a different spectrum and they're often savants. Well, well, yeah, so that's what I was saying about the allegory metaphor. Yeah. Uh, um, when I did a, um, a thing on um, intelligence years ago, I s scored very high on metaphors and symbols and analogies and very low on maths, but I could visualise and feel maths, but I didn't know anything about numbers. So in that way, I scored about know, 30 on maths, but, but, but Analogies and symbols, I got like 99. So I'm living a. Um, the only use uh, of that uh, test uh, was John. Pardon? The only use of that test was John. So they want to make sure that people with spatial learning end up as mechanics and work with their hands, and the people who are nerds and can't figure out how to navigate in a straight line don't lead troops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, um, I, I did that for my own, on my own, and I think they identified me from very early on. Very early on, and it, it, it appeared first as um, homophobia, and then um, there was a natural um, shame and blame and all that kind of stuff in that. And then um, 
that was isolating. And then, um, you know, the whole... I don't know when the conscious act came in to target me. Oh, I actually do. I know later in life when it did. So I don't know how early. And I don't know from which dimension and from which entities, if they were human beings. Yeah, or well, so, well, someone would have made a trek for that. Pardon? Someone's made a trek for that. So you would have ended up on someone, someone's radar. So uh, I, I know when I was born, like I was, um, look, I was with the human, the human earth like you are. I was absolutely on the radar. Like you are. I well, with the human earth like you. Uh, there was a, <coughs> we, we were intercepted. By, I don't want to go too far into this, but um, um, for want of a better word, your folks, let's just say the word your folks, and, made them, and they don't care that they kill people because I've seen it happen. My best friend was um, a very beautiful and powerful person and they destroyed him. And um, I stood by his side for his whole life and... Um, they used everything they could. It was almost interdimensional. And he ended up just a shell of a man, drinking a cask of green a day. Have you read Nicholas Tully's book, Black Point? No. Kind of like him. Well, you know what? He had a toxic family. So this is like my family. His sister was in education in university. He'd never passed year eight. And his brother was a cop. And his mother was a, a paranoid schizophrenic later in life. And his dad was a fucking cunt. He used to poison cats <laughs> who were coming to his yards to get his birds. I'm like, when I was a little kid, and I used to go around there, and I'd, I'd catch him putting the poison into the into the into the dog's cage. You know that kind of stuff that fucks you up, and you just go, oh, sociopath. So, so sociopath, absolute fucking sociopath. Sociopath. It really yeah. was. And I'm like, what the fuck, you know? And that's. And no one knew, no one knew this, no one, no one understands it, no one, no one called it out for what it was, and even after he was dead, I said to his sister, I'm in a fuck situation, in the memory of which, will you help me? She goes, he's fucking dead, why would you even bother? And I'm like, the fucking coldness that it comes out, you know, of toxic family scapegoating, when they consciously or consciously, or consciously, identify one person, and demonise them collectively, through their whole fucking lives, and and to that to that effect, it's a um, uh, it's a um, it's a system which is either innate or it's um, just a, a fact of life that scapegoats exist, but it, it, it destroys the person. But you know what the op, op, the opposite side of the story is, that scapegoat has the fucking most amazing view of humanity, you know. And, and, and apologies if I'm throwing too many of these. No, no, don't be too full on me because I have not sorry. Dave yeah. Grossman's book talks about on killing and psychology of killers. 95% of the population are not natural born killers. Less than 5% are. And they typically are concentrated in prisons and special forces. They yeah, prisons and special forces. And the, and the, um, the sociopaths become politicians. But the rest of that is the evidence of campaigns and wars at the Battle of Gettysburg they found 13,000 weapons that had been reloaded several times because the methodology to engage the enemy was kneel, command the fire, reload. So when they were told to fire, only 10% of people on that battlefield actually shot other people. All right. Those people <coughs> willingly died pretending to load their muskets. They Where, was that? Where was that? Where was that? Gettysburg. Where is that? Uh, the U.S. independence. Oh, right, 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 okay. Yeah. And so during Sorry, the, I, 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 when yeah. the First World War, yeah. humans were trained to shoot for World War One by shooting at wooden discs. When I was in Special Forces, we shot each other. We shot at humans to desensitise, to make them faster and more effective. I'm not shooting are you, are you, would you say you're an empath or a sociopath? No, I'm an impact because the sociopaths are the ones that have been charged with war crimes with Ben Robert Smith. With what? With Ben Robert Smith and the Victoria Cross film. Was that was that what I saw on the news that that the famous SAS guy yeah, and the someone raging and because you don't know until you're in the SAS that there are impacts and sociopaths. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And right. because I was a commander, my job was to stop my troops murdering fucking civilians. Yep. Uh, I don't know. 
What was that sound thing you were talking about before that changes the sound into something else? Pheromone. Yeah, what is it? So it's a crystal. Yeah, what so is it? a crystal, when you point a laser at it, so essentially it's a circuit switch. If you have a positive, an input and an output, you can turn an inert object into a listening device yeah. that nobody knows is in the room. And that was in the 60s. What, 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 what do you know of this? That, um, say a bird's squawking and it goes, bah, 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 like that, and they know you've got a vulnerability to some particular thing. And so they identify the, the bird, change the sound to something that sounds like if you were uh, like puppet arm, puppet arm. It, it changes the narrative of outside sounds to sound phonetically like something similar that they've created the neuroses in you and already, and they even amplify it from outside the sound. Have you accounted for parabolic? Pardon me? Have you accounted for parabolic? Oh, what's that? The human mind's natural pattern sensing. No, I haven't. Oh, no, I haven't. So when you look at clouds, you see the queen's face yeah, yeah. after she's been buried. The human mind is designed for survival, not. Um, oh, how interesting you are. Yeah, not, 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 not oh, yeah. perceiving the reality. And so that's why when you look at PowerPoints, you see faces. Yeah. Because you. I, I, I see them. Well, I, I see them. Um, I don't live in an allegorical world. Like, my, if I go into a shopping centre, the combination of lights and mirrors and people and shop front and everything flashy, I feel like I'm in a cubist painting. I can't even, I can't even exist. You in know what you just described? What? Soldiers post traumatic stress. You're hyper vigilant. I absolutely am hyper vigilant. Have you looked at this um, very basic batshit life that I live? Or apart from and I don't know whether you saw the Bourne movies. In the early one, we said, I know the guy sitting at the bar weighs 220 pounds and he can handle himself. There's a shotgun behind the counter and at this altitude, shot, I can run. Oh, uh, you know what? I haven't trusted my intuition. I haven't trusted my intuition enough. Because but I'm you're making all of those calculations. That's what paradelia and that's what hypervigilance does. Well, I'm... There is no... I wonder if you do know who I am. Do you? Yeah. Well, you've crossed my heart somewhere. Like what's, what's your servant? Well, I don't know the name. What is your name? Do you know what I'm telling you? Your first name? My name's Tony Ridley. What? My name's Tony Ridley. Tony Ridley. Tony Ridley. Well, uh, well no, that's familiar. Are you impressed about that now? No, I'm happy, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. Because I'm, I'm not a sociopath. I'm a narcissist. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, who is the dude you banged today? Let's get off the topic for a minute. Let's look at the first series. Perth, the joke is. There are 5,000 people that claim to be in the SRS and 500 that deny it. Yeah, so, oh, what in Perth? Oh, in Perth, where the barracks, yeah. the SAS is based. No. There are 5,000 people that claim to be in the SAS and 500 people that deny it. And they're the operators. Oh, right. You don't want to be detected, you don't want to be known. Well, I, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually a bit of an oxymoron like that because I'm thinking about your basic life here. I don't even listen to music. I can't. I can't have it in too much stimulation. But I express a lot, and I've got um, online websites, and I've got a YouTube channel, and that stuff. Highest concentration of Vietnam vets is in the bush in the Northern Territory. Because the, 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 the highest concentration of Vietnam vets is in the bush in Northern Territory. Really? Because they removed themselves from the stimulus of modern environment. They just <coughs> want to get back to nature. Mm. And everything else is too much. Mm. Well, I'm not a Vietnam vet, but I've been to war because um, I've been exploited in a very conscious and public way, and most people are stupid. They don't even know what's going on. I didn't know what's going on, but I was the powerful one. And now um, everyone's convinced um, of the narrative that I said, and um, then used my um, very vulnerable and courageous writings as a young man as a blueprint to exploit me later on. Because you know the just world theory doesn't hold water and they all believe it. Yeah, so do. You, you know the just world theory. Just world. Just world theory is where populations, communities and society believe that the government in their best interests and they're being protected. Oh, I know that doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I used That's to say, I used to say. You know that. it doesn't exist? Yeah. They all don't know. Yeah, well, how, how do I get out of my situation? Because I'm fucked. I'm literally fucked. My survivability in that is to be to understand the problem better. It's a novel problem. So <coughs> you've got to dig into the problem. I need to research not try and Not try and hold on to what you think it should be. 
because those things are typically not there. Risk, uh, um, risk forecasting. I was just. Oh, yeah. Risk yeah. forecasting. Yeah. Ninety percent of the algorithmics and metrics used were developed by Benedictine monks in the 1700s, and <coughs> rolling fucking dice. Mm. You don't calculate the complex risk of telecommunications and societal variances across borders and supply chains by rolling three fucking dice. And that's the foundation of 90% of the algorithm. Mm. Wow. So, so I'm getting off track. But the you're dummies too, you're too clever for me. But the I dummies that do the three day course don't know because they're a fucking barista. I thought, of it, I thought about this today about um, when I did the lease course back in 1990, whatever it was. Um, but um, the guy who was standing up, I was thinking about this today when I was going to school, and I'm like, the guy who was standing up really got his time to shine. Like, he loved being up front of that class. And he was right up there, he had his shiny shoes on, he was at the Nice course and the government, whatever, the cake, whatever. And he's he's loving his little time to shine. And I actually thought to myself today, does his wife pick on him? Does his family like him? You know, that kind of stuff. Because he was saying things like, I like him. But he was saying stuff like, you want to know what, where, you, where your toaster's buttered? Well, this is what you need to do. He goes, what do you think the newspaper is? He goes, that's an opportunity for you to know what's going on. And he's, he's all this, but all these really kind of um, really basic, I needed to be refreshed on them because I, you know, or kind of made conscious of them. But read the Herald Sun. Go out and read the Herald Sun. Then you'll find out what's going on in the world. It just seemed to me to be a very narrow view. And but he was he was he was a, he was in government agencies teaching the next level of um, business leaders. You know. To, to, to last, read to last to week, I did a 652-page <coughs> Crown Casino organised crime investigation. Oh, you did? Yep. Yeah. And yeah. you'll find it on LinkedIn. Oh, can uh, I? Mm. Oh, cool. And I did a thematic... I forget your name already. See, that's the problem with me. I did a thematic analysis and used an algorithm for um, discourse, corpus linguistics, the basic vocabulary used in lingua franca, you know, day-to-day phrase. Yeah. The... Crown Casino, Royal Commission, 650 pages, mentions threat twice. Really? Which means what exactly is it you're protecting against because risk should be a specific threat, an exposure, and a vulnerability. That's what you manage. If you didn't look at the threat, which is pandemic problems, whatever the fuck you're doing over here, it's made up. So it mentions it twice, and I did the same thing with the Stark Man Casino that followed last yeah. week. They are manufactured narratives by the governments, yeah. Deloitte, the public prosecution, to spend more money on the things they think will solve it without actually diagnosing the problem. Yeah, yeah. It's a smoke and mirrors. And so it's all there. So uh, have you used in vivo before? In vivo. Oh, yeah, that's, that, that uh, um, examines data so, and stuff. Soci- sociology yep. discourse. So I ran it through three or four different algorithmic tools. Yep. And so that intelligence was used 11 times. So you didn't look at the threat. You didn't look at intelligence. Crime is mentioned four times. What the fuck were you lot looking at? Yeah. And yet the word control, which is an accounting word, is used like 1,200 times. Yeah. The Crown Casino Royal Commission was all about putting Deloitte in to put more controls, not solving the problem. All right. So are you are you, are you are you the um the underdog in terms of um bringing some accountability to these um, government um, um, royal commissions in in a um, in a way that's um more um, empathic and less corporate. No, I'm a, I'm a force multiplier. What's that? A force multiplier, my job, and especially in the military, was how to turn farmers and communities to fight wars against numerically superior invaders. Oh, right. So I'm turning all the government's instruments against themselves, because that was my job. Oh, because so you're using a metaphor for, like, uh, as a war thing, and you're, you're, you're playing an intellectual war with the government, and you're just, guerrilla war, guerrilla war, and you just, you just destroy the joint. <laughs> Are they aware that you're destroying the joint? Yeah, because I created a false network <coughs> online. So when you Google NDIA risk, I created 160 fake profiles that all the media and everyone else knows 
they don't know who created them. <coughs> How funny. I'm, I have a hearing with the Administrative Affairs so I can go on Tuesday. A hearing with the Administrative Affairs? Do you know, do you know a chick called um, Kate Watson? Oh, She's from know. Canberra. Oh, I've stopped my head. No, I've stopped my head. Is it a um, lawyer? What about the member of Pennell? I cannot rule it so fine. Oh, that's right. Politicians. Uh, uh, yeah, well, it, it, it seems to me to be almost a, a, um, a godly kind of persecution that I'm um, like, how do all these people get on the same bandwidth? Like, how do they all treat me the same way? Like, I've approached. You do bias. It's prejudice. It's prejudice and stigma. Like once you once you down and out, you, you know what human beings are really fucked creatures. They they're fatally flawed and they they are they are innately prejudiced. And um, this this is not this is like in my experience with you. It was brutal, brutal. I just want to say this. Wait, let me speak first. So I just want to say that um, if there was a tribe of mon- if we were extending monkeys, and and one monkey was the king. And the monkey held all the bananas until um, all of the other monkeys started dying. And he just like was so full he couldn't eat anymore. But he still held on to the bananas. We would look at that monkey and go, how fucking interesting. Let's study it. Right? Because the humans would be interested. Why the fuck has this monkey done that? But in human lives, in the human monkeys that we are, when someone's got billions of dollars like Elon Musk, we put them on um, the cover of Forbes magazine. Or the Halo effect. What's that called? Halo effect. What's that? First developed during the Second World War when officers would interview a soldier and they were dressed well, they looked athletic, they assumed everything in all manner of life was successful. Yeah. But there was never any evidence and more often than not, they were fucking things up but because they were a football star, they were a rich kid or whatever, nobody bothered to look and that's what happens with companies. It's because they're put on a pedestal for whatever reason. See, Elon Musk, no one ever looks at the evidence. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 who designs that? It's usually so. Like, is it, is it, is it an innate um, thing that just heroes heroes aren't born, they're made? No, risk is socially constructed. So it's not it's not like natural science. It's not a rock in the ground. Risk of smoking is socially constructed by the people in power, the people who are affected, and the means in which it's used to either prioritise and control. It doesn't exist by itself, so therefore. How? This is the most interesting conversation we've ever had. So it doesn't, it doesn't become <coughs> a risk until we all agree that it's a risk. So when cars were first made, they had no seatbelts, but because people started dying, and there's a thing called the Peltzman effect, which was wooden steering wheels. When they would have a collision, the wooden steering wheels would stab into people, but because the car manufacturers made those cars, I'm not putting seatbelts. I'm not putting. It was only after the outrage and the risk was demonstrated, they put seat belts and they changed the steering wheels. Yeah. After the community went, that's a fucking mess. Do something about it. Yeah. So, what's your biggest threat? And what was what has been your what's been your own doing? It, it, no, I'm too much. Yeah, this is what I was saying about intelligence before. Like, so are you are, are you are you surviving? How explain the narrative around that you've been fucked over kind of thing. Like, Oh, I, suffer from, I, I have horrendous nightmares from, yeah, yeah. from my service, of course, yeah. um, but I keep myself busy, I have research problems, because that's what I was trying to do. So, uh, You know, that's that's the saving grace, and your intelligence saves you in that regard, because you fill, you fill up the space that would uh, needlessly be used up with um, with distress, but you're um, filling it up with um, the, the active what nature most, of looking into what it. What most people don't realise about special forces and those sorts of units is that you are selected and trained to be a savant. And that is to pick up a subject, weaponize it, make it lethal in six to eight weeks, and do it all day, every day. So I'm an expert in explosives, in the destruction of airfields, right. 50 odd specialist courses. <coughs> and I have a master's degree, and I speak Indonesian, and I'm doing a doctorate. Yeah. Wow. Most how, 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 how fantastic. And what's the biggest existential risk to Australia right now? The Apart planet. from me. The planet. Oh, that's a given. You no, said no, that no, no, one existential. No, 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 well, well, I mean, I mean, like, um, you got to go back a step. Like, 
I, I do want to get to Brenda Shagging thing, but ignorance. <laughs> and criminology is known as agnotology, and that is the ignorance of, and so there's a scale when you measure knowledge in the shadow of that, you're also supposed to measure it, the known and unknown unknowns. Mm -hmm. No one measures it. Do you want a Viagra? Sure. Oh, you, yeah. Yeah, sure. I've got some here. So, the unknown. Oh, you know, I've got no fucking lube. I've got no fucking lube. I've got no fucking lube. I know, I've just pulled this guy again, haven't I? Only forgot that, these ones make you, um, feel a bit, make you feel a bit stuffy. Are you calling your deal? Yeah, I'm going to see where he is. Ask him if he's got a sharp. Oh, no, he doesn't. He only smokes no. opium. No. He's not a user. Oh, oh no, it looks as if I have a string job. I'd inject. He 